my beautiful friends and welcome back to another video. I hope you have been doing so very well. I'm really excited to be sharing today's video with you because as you know, I am all about being creative in the kitchen and trying new things and all of that beautiful stuff. And I'm really excited because I've also collaborated on today's video with Wiltshire. If you've never heard of Wiltshire before, they are an iconic Australian brand and they make cookware and bakeware and knives and just like so many things that you could need in the kitchen, Wiltshire has and also at such an affordable price. So yeah, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I do lots of baking and lots of cooking and I have been using Wiltshire products for years and I absolutely love them. So I'm really stoked to be working with them on today's video. It is winter here in Australia and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you four really easy and creative and delicious winter recipes. These are things that you can make as a hearty lunch or for a family dinner. And of course, for all of them, I have been using some of my favorite Wiltshire products. Anyway, with all that being said, let's get into today's video. This is four really easy, delicious, vegan vegan winter recipes and I hope you enjoy. Alrighty, so the first thing that we are making today is a coconut cauliflower curry and this is quite a fresh and mild curry in my opinion. So if you're new to eating curries and you don't like spicy things, this is definitely for you. I first of all started by cutting up some lime as well as spring onion and then from there I also cut up a cauliflower into floret. Floret? Yeah, floret size pieces. Then in a saucepan, I started with some olive oil and then I added in the spring onion that I had cut up as well as some garlic because we know I love garlic in pretty much everything. I, uh, yeah, I cooked that over a medium to high heat until the onion and the garlic were quite brown. And then I added in coconut cream as well as tinned tomatoes. With the tinned tomatoes, you really want to like mash them up with your hands so that they are not like big chunks when you put them in, if that makes sense. Anyway, from there I added in some lime juice and then I added in the cauliflower that I had previously cut up as well as some curry powder and some salt and you could also add pepper if you would like to. Then I mix this together until the cauliflower was nice and well coated and it might look here like it's uh it's going to overflow this saucepan, but I promise you it's not. Uh, the cauliflower will cook down and this is the perfect size saucepan for this recipe. So yeah, I allowed that to cook and then from there I added in some chickpeas as well and then I kept stirring that and allowed it to cook over the heat with the lid just slightly on. So we're still letting, letting some air out as well. Then I added in some chopped spinach as well as some coriander and I mixed that through so that the spinach, spillage, spinach <laughs> became nice and wilted and this is the exact texture that we are looking for. Then in my rice cooker, I cooked some rice. <laughs> um, you could obviously cook rice over the stove if you would like to and you can choose whichever rice that you would like or maybe you want to not serve it with rice whatever suits you, but I personally enjoy serving this dish with rice. Then in a pie dish, which is something that I use for a lot more than uh, eating pies, I served my rice as well as some of the cauliflower and chickpea curry. And then from there, I also added on some coconut yogurt. I love coconut yogurt with savory food, especially with curry. So I topped this with some coconut yogurt as well as some fresh spring onions and fresh coriander. And then I also added on some lime that I would squeeze over the top as well. Like I said, this is a really, really mild curry. So I definitely recommend trying it out if you're not someone who eats curry often and would like to try something new. And it's really fresh and delicious and creamy and also keeps well in the fridge or freezer if you wanted to make it in bulk. So yes, a very, very delicious meal. Alrighty, moving on and we are making arguably the best pizza that I have made of all time and I'm first of all starting by cutting up some pears which may seem like a kind of weird ingredient for pizza but just stick with me and I promise you it's delicious. 
So I cut pear into thin pieces and then I tossed it in some olive oil over the heat in a saucepan. Then I also added in some maple syrup as well as balsamic vinegar, which makes pretty much everything taste good. I cooked this over the heat so that it was nice and soft and the pear was like nice and poached as well. And then using a pizza pan and a pre-purchased pizza base, I'm not at the stage of being able to make my own pizza dough, but I'll get there eventually. I first of all put on some tomato paste and then from there I added on the balsamic pears that I had poached and yeah, this is a really sweet and delicious pizza. It's like my favorite thing of all time. My housemate was kind of skeptical about me making this and then she agreed it was the best pizza of all time. So you're welcome. <laughs> Whilst the pizza was in the oven, I then chopped up some walnuts into small pieces, making sure they're nice and fine. And then once the pizza was all done, I pulled it out of the oven and you can see it's looking nice and golden, that crispy pizza base. And then I added on some fresh rocket, followed by the walnuts that I had chopped up previously. And then from there, I also decided to add on some vegan feta. This is kind of optional if you want to invest in making your own vegan feta or purchasing some. So yeah, I definitely uh, recommend adding feta if you're after something like that, it is super delicious. And then from there, I also added on a drizzle of balsamic and maple. Uh, and yeah, this was a really amazing, hearty, but also really fresh meal for winter. Uh, it's a little bit salty, a little bit sweet, and it's something that is definitely unique and uh, sure to impress someone if you would like to cook for someone. Okay, moving on and we're starting with some potatoes because we are making a vegan shepherd's pie. So I am chopping some potatoes into cube sized pieces and then in a saucepan over the heat, I'm adding in a whole bunch of water and then once it is boiling, I added in my potatoes and then put the heat down so that it just was simmering. So yeah, I cooked these potatoes for quite a while. All of the cooking instructions are down in the description box below if you do want to check that out. And then once they were all done, I put them into a bowl with some olive oil as well as nutritional yeast, of course, a staple in my kitchen. And then I also added in some salt as well as onion powder and garlic powder, also staples in my kitchen. <laughs> then using a potato masher, I mashed all of this together until it was really nice and smooth and creamy. Then in a saucepan, I started with some olive oil and then I added in some minced garlic as well as spring onions. Then from there, I allowed that to brown as we did in the cauliflower recipe. And then I added in one can of lentils and one can of red kidney beans, followed by some salt as well as tomato paste. And then I also added in some almond meal to thicken it, make sure it wasn't like too moist. Anyway. Once that lentil mixture was all done, I got my pie dish. I use this so much in my kitchen, oh my goodness. And I put the lentil mixture down the bottom and I topped it with the mashed potatoes. I smoothed that out and then I also made some like nice little patterns on the top if you wanna get a little bit creative. I then topped it with some sesame seeds and I baked this in the oven. Baking instructions are in the description box for you below. So yeah, then I topped this with some fresh basil. This serves about four people depending on how hungry you are and it also keeps well in the fridge if you do wanna make it in advance. It's really hearty and really filling and delicious and yeah, my housemate absolutely loved it as well. So yeah. Alrighty, moving on to our last meal for this video. And these are some stuffed sweet potatoes. So I love having the time to like just roast the sweet potato until it is so crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. And that is exactly what we do in this recipe. So I got three large sweet potatoes and I drizzled them with olive oil and then put them in the oven for at least an hour. Then in a saucepan, I decided to cook some quinoa to uh, make the stuffing of the stuffed sweet potatoes. And I cooked the quinoa in according to the packet's instructions, and then once it was almost done, I added in a whole bunch of chopped kale. Then from there, I also added in sun-dried tomatoes and allowed some of the oil that came with those sun-dried tomatoes to go with it. And then I also added in some onion powder and some garlic powder, as well as some salt. That oil from the sun-dried tomatoes will really work its way through the quinoa and the kale and give it a lot of flavor. So I def definitely recommend using some of it. Once the sweet potatoes were all done, 
I uh, chopped them open, cut them down the middle, and then I served one. So I would recommend one sweet potato per serving. So this uh, recipe serves three. And then I stuffed it with some of the mixture. And then also optional, if you'd like to, you could add like a cashew cream drizzle, a tahini drizzle. You could add any kind of sauce on top that you like if you want to give it a little more moisture, but it definitely doesn't need it. I also topped it with some fresh parsley, but you could add any fresh herbs. And that was my really delicious stuffed sweet potato. Alrighty, my beautiful friends. So that is everything for today's video. All of the full recipes are down in the description box below. And if you do try any of these recipes, make sure to tag me on Instagram as well as Wiltshire on Instagram so that we can all see your creations. Thank you to Wiltshire again for first of all, making such affordable bake and cookware that I can use in the kitchen, but also for working with me on today's video. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a really beautiful day and I will see you super soon for another video. Bye. <laughs>